Hey, what's up dudes and dudettes, Brad the Guitologist here. This is a recent trash find. Found this along with some other stuff uh, at the curb and uh, just thought this would make a okay video. I'm just gonna see if this works. Um, we've got some really nasty repairs on this thing in the past. Got a real botched repair right there, obviously, with some duct tape. The cabinet on this. Uh, looks okay. It's not the worst I've seen for something like this. It does look like maybe it was, um, you know, in the garage or in an outbuilding or something for a time. I uh, would like to get it working and have a second uh, 6 volt and 12 volt battery charger. This one came from Western Auto. For those not in the United States and are not as old as me, it was kind of a small department store, I guess you could call it, hardware store, kind of like a true value, sort of. Um, I think they sold all kinds of different things, uh, bicycles, you know, and parts for bicycles. They sold like kids' toys, uh, some some kids' toys, lawnmower, lawnmowers and parts and I think they even had like tubes and stuff like that you could go in and get back in the day. Um, and of course stuff like this. Um, we've got a really bad power cord on this. So we'll have to do something with that. It might be the first thing we do actually to see if we've get, just got anything at all. What's under this? Nothing. That is the That's the bodgiest power cord repair I think I've ever seen in my life. Right there, look at this. Look at that. I mean, that is just hor that's horrific. <laughs> that's that is a house fire waiting to happen. Uh, what is what were they thinking on that? Man, I'll tell you what, dude. Sometimes you, your IQ points just go down even looking at stuff like this. Um, let's go ahead and just clip this off. I might use this same cord. It's got a lot of cord here that's still good but from here on obviously it's not yeah i think we'll just go ahead and clip that go ahead and open her up and see what kind of horrors await us inside I, pu I pulled this one straight out of the bin usually i don't go in people's actual trash bins on the curb you know i'll grab stuff stuff off the curb but usually i you know i'm not going to run around open opening people's trash bins looking for um fines or nothing like that usually uh, the exception here was just due to the fact that it had this bin had so much stuff piled on to, on the top of it it looked like somebody had cleaned out a, a, an outbuilding or something um, or they were moving and they had a bunch of extra crap they just threw into this bin and it was filled up past the rim and so the the lid wasn't even on it um, and this was kind of just poking out the top so I decided to grab it uh, but it was in the actual bin on its way to the dump, so hopefully we will be able to make a save of this. We'll see what kind of shape it's in. I don't hold out a whole lot of hope, but I mean, there's there's not a lot that can go wrong with one of these as long as the transformer is good. I would I would reckon we're gonna be good to go. These should be diodes for rectification because you have to rectify the AC and the DC for charging. Um, and then you have 6 and 12 volts. So the switch will select between um, two different windings. Yeah, this is my first time actually being in one of these. So we'll have to figure... You're, you're looking at it probably for the first time too, I would imagine. And it looks like... Okay... We've got one, one end of the power cord goes to a terminal on this side. So we've got a terminal here, so I'm assuming that's correct. But again, we've got another, the other end of the power cord uh, goes nowhere. It does have a terminal on it, so I would assume that it goes on a spade terminal similar to this one. But I don't see a spade terminal poking out anywhere, do you? Mm. Holler if you see one. I just don't I don't see any spare spade terminals poking out anywhere. 
where would it have come from? Yeah, right there on the switch, there's a there's a third terminal right there where it probably goes. Yeah, that would make sense because that's on the same side of the transformer. The switch um, is on the same same section of transformer, it looks like, as the power. So the you know, here you got part of the power comes in here, you got these two wires coming out uh, on this side go into the switch and then the switch has an empty terminal so yeah I would presume that is the case that it goes right there so I think the, the game plan here is let's just wire up a just a, a quick we're basically gonna redo what they had done on the bodge job except we're gonna just do it a little bit better I do need some kind of retainer though uh, for this power cord I don't you know I don't want to leave it just dangling out flopping around. Let's see what I got. Should have something that'll work. Yeah, that'll probably work right there. And if we get this thing going, I'll obviously I'll uh I'll vacuum all of this out of here or blow it out or something. Okay, that'll be good enough for now. I'm going to get probably some uh, <clears throat> epoxy or something on that later on if we if we ascertain that it's working properly, we'll we'll get something on that to hold it a little better than that. Okay, so the idea with a repair like this is I'm going to uh I'm going to shrink tube the uh, each of these lines and then I'm going to shrink tube over the whole repair I'm just I'm going about this right now just presuming that this is gonna work if it doesn't work this will all be for nothing but uh I don't know this I mean there's not like I said there's not a lot in these that can fail unless the transformer has failed or one of the uh, diodes and we're just gonna J hook it yeah most of the week I've had uh, Shania Twain's man I feel like a woman stuck in my head and I can't get rid of it until tonight and now I've got Prince's cream <laughs> stuck in my head <laughs> get on top of cream <laughs> I have no idea why <laughs> occasionally I will get <laughs> you know I'll get something stuck in there that's a, you know a good song <laughs> But usually it's just crap. But yeah, just about anything is better than men's shirts, short skirts, oh, 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 over and over again in your head. So, yep. Yeah. For no ex no explicable reason whatsoever. Just, you know, the problem was I heard it in, I was in Walmart the other day looking for, uh, looking for f uh, fuel hose for that lawnmower that I was repairing. Don't even bother going in Walmart if you, I mean, unless it's just you have no other alternatives, man. Walmart is a hellscape. Man, I hate that place. Worst store on the planet. Nine times out of ten, you don't find what you're looking for anyway. In this case, they, did, they didn't have anything. Anything that was like parts or, I mean, you would think that in the lawnmower section, uh, you know, they would stock some simple things like that, but nope. Nope. And half of the time, like, the stuff that you really need is locked up in these little cases now anyway. Like, anything over a certain value is just, you know, because of all the riffraff pieces of shit that go in there, like, s just stealing shit. Now they've fucked everybody and made it so that you have to ask somebody for anything over, like, the price of $20.00. You know, that might possibly fit under a trench coat. You know, it's just like not worth it. It's not worth your time or patience or effort to screw with it. So, yeah, every time I go in there, I regret it.
All right, so there's that together. I probably could go ahead and just test it out like it is before I shrink it down, but nah, we'll go ahead and shrink them down. Like I said, I have confidence it's probably gonna work out just fine. Now I cover over the entire thing just to hold it all together a little better. It's the way I like to roll. If you have one of these rework stations like this that has the uh, hot air gun in addition to uh, your soldering iron, you can't just turn it off when you're done using it. Turn off the power like that when it's still hot. It has to blow cool air through it until it cools itself down and then shuts off. Uh, so yeah, you, you can burn one up like that or start a fire in your house. You don't want to do that. Speaking of fires, let's go ahead and uh, see if we can start one with this thing. Probably should test these leads right here just to make sure that um, they're continuous because the bodged repairs, I'm going to have to, you know, fix that anyway. But I want to make sure while we're testing it that it just, uh, could, that we get something continuous on the uh, ohms reading. And it is. So that's good. So let's set it to volts DC we'll plug this thing in and dial it up and see if we can get 6 and 12 volts to come out of it all right okay we're getting some we're getting one watt 0 0.02 amps we're not drawing much because this isn't uh, this isn't a load um, but we're at 3.8 volts. Yeah, I think we're going to be good on this. We should get to a little bit over 6 volts. It's probably 6.5 volts, somewhere in there. Yeah. There we go. We're at 120. We have 6.9 volts on the 6 volt setting. And switch to 12. And we have, ooh, we're under 12. We have 11.3 volts. What happened there? Did you see that? Oh, it's this lead. This lead obviously is not good. Yeah, the connection, this connection right here, this taped up connection is obviously not good. You can see it jumping around there, but that's not going to cause it to uh, be under 12 volts. I wonder if we were to change um, the diodes, if we might have uh, some better luck with it. Let me look into that and see what we need to do with that. The charger does work. It's just a little bit low on the uh, 12 volt setting, but let me see if there's something we can do about it. I'm hooking directly up to the secondary here before it goes into these um, dot these diodes. Watch this voltage right here as we turn it on. Oh yeah, it's going to be AC. So we got 27 volts right there AC in total. There's going to be some voltage drop in the diodes. Let's put it on 6 volts. So it goes from 17 volts to 27 volts. It only adds 10 volts. You would think that it would double that, wouldn't you? Maybe it's just how it's supposed to operate. I don't know. I am going to go ahead and clean it up. Uh, we'll clean out the inside and everything. Uh, make sure it's all clean. And then... Uh, We'll do something about these connections on the the terminals because they're both both of them are have seen better days. You can see they've both got tape on them. See, so you have to see what's going on with this. It's a 
Yeah, I guess I could probably solder that one a little bit better. Okay, this is definitely the one that was screwing up. I'm losing connection. Oh, I can see why. Look, there's nothing, nothing really there. Okay. That ought to be a little bit better. Okay. Yeah, despite the liberal use of electrical tape, um, it's definitely at least usable. Okay, so I was going through my stash of parts and I came across uh, these bridge rectifiers that I already had on hand. I had uh, had three of those things on hand already. I'd, I'd kind of forgotten about. So what I'm going to do, um, I think these are rated 20-something amps. Uh, and they obviously they have a hole in the middle for mounting, uh, which should work out perfectly with this chassis the way that the, that it is. So what we're going to do, we're going to replace the rectifier uh, in this. This rectifier that's in this one right now, I believe is, is probably selenium. Um, not sure. I've never seen a rectifier like. Obviously, this is not the kind of rectifier that you see in radios or. Uh, old amplifiers or anything like that, so it's it's kind of new to me, but I believe it's a selenium rectifier. We're going to get rid of it. Probably what's going on is the selenium is breaking down, especially with as small as the rectifier is, or as thin as it is. Um, I don't think there's enough there to really uh, maintain the voltages uh, without uh, a, a huge voltage drop. So I think that's why we're losing voltage perhaps. So we're going to use this rectifier and maybe that will boost our voltages back up to acceptable levels. Um, and plus it'll just make this thing where it's, you know, for sure a workable unit. I would hate to, um, I would hate to do less than I know is, uh, necessary to get this thing going. So let's open it back up and we'll install one of these and see if we get any better results. Also, while I'm in there, I'm probably going to go ahead and just replace this cord. This I found I found way too many uh, spots on it to patch for me to really be comfortable, even my own use, because eventually somebody be, besides me will probably get this and use it, so might as well go ahead and make it safe and put a good cord on it. Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and remove all of these connections. Uh, we'll also go ahead and clean the switch while we're in here. Okay. All right, so there's that disconnected. We'll clean that in a bit. <clears throat> so again, here's the rectifier in the rear of this unit. Uh, this will be one diode, this will be another diode. I, I don't think these diodes are right. I don't think they're working efficiently, so we're gonna get rid of that, replace it with this. <clears throat> the cool thing about these old battery chargers like this, as opposed to some of the newer ones with all of the, the newfangled electronics in them, uh, is some of the new ones have so much circuit protection they won't revive batteries that are that have been depleted down below a certain state. You cannot get them to start even start charging. Um, whereas something like this, you can at least try to revive old batteries because it's just it's just a dumb old tool, you know. And it does what uh, you ask it to do. You have to be smarter than the electronics. We're gonna get the Dremel tool and and grind off these rivets right here, and we'll pop this thing out of here.
years, the sort of investment environment that we started with. You don't build a lemonade stand when the regulators tell you that the future is soda. Likewise, you don't build an oil refinery when the regulators tell you that the future is alternatives either. And so, they haven't. For decades, the last major U.S. refinery built started operating in 1977. And earlier this month, the Chevron CEO says he doesn't expect another one ever to be built in the U.S. again because it requires... Man, it would have been way quicker just to drill this. Should have just drilled it. Would have been tons quicker. Yeah, so this plate uh, is coated in selenium. That's for certain because, like I said, I got into this other plate over here when I was drilling it out and scraped it, and I can really smell it in the air so uh that's definitely sel the selenium plate i'm not sure how it interacts with the rest of this or how it creates the diode but interesting stuff there's a cardboard insulator back here Okay, so we're going to put some thermal paste on this and attach it to the back here. I think I want to grind off, I've already started grinding off some of it, but I want to grind off more of this paint back here because I want as much coupling as possible between this and the metal. We're going to use just the back, of, the metal on the back here as a, as a heat sink. This thing is rated for 35 amps and it has, uh, according to the data sheet, it has uh, a 400 amp surge capability. So this is a quite robust part. Uh, this is an MP3502. It's made by Fu Fuji Electronic Corporation, according to the data, sh data sheet. It's also, uh, like most of these, it's nicely labeled. You've got the positive side here labeled. This will be the DC output positive. And then on the other side here, you're gonna have the negative uh, here's this one is attached to AC on this side as it shows here and on the other side this one will be attached to the other side of the AC so easily labeled it's it's really hard to screw that up so um, but like I said we're gonna grind off some more of this paint go ahead and do that You could also probably, you could put a fan in here too, even if you wanted to. The side of it has grills. Um, so you could just mount a fan here if you wanted and it would suck in air and blow across that. I don't think it's gonna be necessary though. And if it seems like it's getting real hot when we use it, uh, I might revisit that idea and maybe install like a little 12 volt fan. I should be able to come off of the, uh, should be able to come off of the 12 volt output in parallel with a, with a fan. Okay, so here's one of our AC lines here, and here's, uh, is, that, is that right? Yep, and here's the other AC coming in. What the hell happened to that wire? That wire right there was melted. Was melted onto there. What did I do? Did I uh, 
Oh, I think probably what I did was when I was drilling this out over here, that's exactly what happened. Look, okay, so when I was when I was over here drilling this out, this was up against here and I didn't realize it. It was smashed in between. I thought it was just on the transformer, but it wasn't. It was smashed on that, so I'm gonna have to uh, repair that. I'll cut it around the uh, damaged area there. Whoops. <laughs> because this is a stranded wire, we are going to just thread those together like that. So there's that repaired. Um, let's see, what am I missing here? All right, we need the power cord. We need, we need to hook these up to our output as well. Okay, so we gotta figure which one is the uh, positive because we gotta get that to the positive. All right, so that one right there is our positive, which makes sense because it has the red on the wire. So that goes to our positive on our rectifier right there. Negative, of course, will go to our negative DC on our rectifier. Okay. So there is the re the new rectifier uh, completely hooked up. Uh, once again, we have the the AC going to both sides here in the AC. We got the positive uh, DC going to the positive and the negative DC going to the negative. So this will carry the load, the DC load on the other side. Now we just got to hook up the power cable. But I think um, instead of just hooking up a power cable to this, it does have a thermal protect, so I don't think it would be a problem, but I would probably like to, I'm thinking about installing a fuse coming into it on the primary side. I don't know that it's 100% necessary, but it would be a, probably a good idea to do it. Goodness gracious. Good night. All right. Hell's bells, dude. <laughs> it's in there now. I got it. Yeah, it's got it. Okay. Holder's not exactly the right size, I don't think, for that, but it'll work. Okay. Okay, there's the ground. Now I said blue was neutral. So it can just go to the front panel just like it is this one 
Just needs enough to go here. Leave it a little slack. Get that fuse out of there before we solder that. Not a bad idea. Okay. All right, so here's our hot coming into there. Now we need another wire on the other side going up to here. And always be mindful anytime you're soldering directly on a transformer. Don't leave your heat on there for, for too long. You might burn something up inside the transformer. Which we don't, or separate, you know, a connection, which we definitely don't want to do, so. All right. So there is our fuse. We got the hot hot wire comes in, goes to the fuse, then to the transformer. I don't know if there is a. Sometimes the transformers on these things will have a, a thermal protect on the transformer, like a, a fuse already. This one I just don't see one. That's why I've added this. I just don't see a fusible uh, resistor anywhere or, or a, a fuse at all that I can tell. So. It looks like it just goes directly to the transformer. So hence the reason I've added this. Now, if you already have a transformer that has a fuse, sometimes they're hidden sort of on, inside the outer layer there. This one doesn't appear to have one. I don't see one at least. So uh, hence the reason for that. Now we've got our neutral coming in. It goes to the front, to the switch. I'm going to go ahead and spray this switch while I've got this. I'm going to take this outside actually. I'm going to take both of these pieces outside and uh, brush them out real quick. Okay, i got this thing back inside. I've brushed it all out real good. It's uh, clean on the inside. The spade terminals I have, well, I don't have hardly any left in here, do I? But the ones that I do have in here are bigger. They're too big. So what I might do is clip the uh, old terminal. I'll clip this end off of this one. I'll splice these wires together and just have this end terminal here yeah I'll give this some good insulation over the whole the whole connection to make it nice and strong all right there's our connection get this on the whole end like that That's gotten this all this whole area where it's nice and rigid and also it's got that shrink tubing over this so it can't short out against any of the other pins on that switch in spite of the fact that it is um, a splice that splice right there is far safer than it would have been had i not done that let's go ahead and clean the switch i mean since we're in here and we're doing it let's get let's do it right Which should be cleaning. Clean up some of this crap on the desk. Good lord, man. I can't can't even maneuver now. <laughs> Look at it. Stuff's everywhere, man. Where's our return for the hang on. What am I missing? Hang on a second. What am I missing here? missing a uh, terminal I'm missing a lead where's the where's the other lead for the meter I've got this one this one I've got one two three four so these three go to the switch but where's the other one for the uh, meter what I do with it I hope I haven't gotten something backwards here what am I missing let me look back at the video that I just made. 
so I can figure that part out. <laughs> I've messed up somewhere. Okay, uh, so I have figured out where I screwed up, or where I'm getting confused, I guess I should say. Um, they had the ammeter. Uh, it looks like on a tap on the transformer. So this, the secondary tap, or the secondary taps, I should say, uh, it looks like there are two main ones, and then there might be, a, this is what I think is a center tap. I guess we can check that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I don't know why they would have, why they would have the positive coming, coming out. I don't know why they would have the positive terminal to the batteries doing what they were doing. They had, this is like a circuit protector, right? So it's a thermal, thermal protector. So if it over, uh, overheats or over volts or whatever, it'll shut the thing down. Or if it draws too many amps, it'll shut it down. Um, now we have a fuse on the primary as well. But, uh, so it's coming out of the center tap. And this is, this should be unrectified AC coming off that center tap through, through this protector then through this, and then into the into the ammeter. And then on the other side of the ammeter was the positive, the positive lead that goes to the, you know, the positive battery clip. So I don't know why they did that. I'll, I'll put a schematic up on the screen right now that shows what I believe should be in here. Okay, so what they had going on is they had the... Uh, they had the primary of the transformer. So here's the primary. So that this is your this is your uh, 120 volts AC coming into the primary. Uh, then they had the secondary, right? Like this. Uh, they had the diodes going in reverse, where normally you would see the diodes. Um, the opposite way so they had the diodes I believe I'm fairly confident this is the case it was kind of hard to tell because the diodes were so tired they were actually biasing in both directions when you tried to put voltage on them so they weren't really you know they were old and tired obviously um, then you had a center tap so they had these they had the center tap going to the positive So they had these in reverse. Normally you would see a, a center tapped transformer like this. So you have the 120 coming in. And on the secondary, you have uh, you have this sort of thing, but the the diodes are like this. Right, and then this will be the negative. And then your output here, so your negative basically is gonna go to, it'll come over here like this, and come over here and you'll have a, uh, you'll have your load like this. So this is your, this is your load. Here's your negative, and here's your positive voltage. Okay, so that's normal, but they had it, they had this backwards. They had this where this was coming like this, obviously the same same thing, but you get the you get the drift. The negative was up here and the positive was here. All right. This is what we're going to do. This is what was in there. The reason they had done it this way is because of the technical physical limitation of the selenium. Uh, rectifier that because of the way it's constructed it was easier for them to get the terminals on on the uh, opposite side so anyway this is what we're gonna do something like this but obviously we're gonna have the we're gonna have the meter and we're gonna have the uh, uh, the thermal limiter right here in series okay after giving this a little bit of thought I figured out uh, what I need to do here I think the original rectifier was a full wave rectifier but it wasn't a full wave bridge rectifier it was a center tapped uh, full wave rectifier meaning the secondary of the transformer had that center tap on it 
what we need to do here, I think we can salvage this. We're going to reverse the direction of the, the current through the uh, secondary of the transformer. We can use part of this uh, full wave bridge rectifier. So what we want to do is uh, the positive. That's normal. That's correct. But let's see. So we will go AC on one side, AC on the other side of that full wave bridge. Okay, we're going to put a terminal over here on the back to attach the uh, negative lead to. Okay, so there's our negative connection going out. We're just going to measure again uh, the the raw voltage coming out with no load. We're not going to see anything on this until we put a load, um, but we will be able to see some voltage. Let's go ahead and dial it up. All right, so we're about halfway right there, and we're way closer to what we should be looking at. Yep. I think this is going to get it, fellas. Okay. So there we are at 120 volts. We have 14 and a half volts. Uh, and again, that is, that's 14 and a half volts with no load on the secondary. On the six volt, we have actually 10 volts. So, you know, I, I suspected that was going to be the case that the voltages would be higher with a silicon uh, uh, rectifier. Let's drop down a little bit. Let's put a load on it and we'll see what that does. The other battery charger I have is about as old as this one. I think it's from, it's pretty, it's got to be from the same era because it's built about the same way. And we may end up doing this same thing to it as well. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to dial up the Variac to the point where we reach the 12 volts on the output and see how close we are at that point. We should be able to see uh, should be able to see both meters right here, I think. Maybe even all three. I do this right. Okay. So this meter will be our voltage uh, on the battery terminals. Okay, this will be our, uh, the amps that are being drawn. And then back here, you'll see the uh, input voltages. So let's start low and we'll go up. We're drawing some current there, two amps. There's 110 volts. We're going to be pretty much dead on, I think. Okay, there's 120 right there. We're drawing 0.6 amps overall. Uh, the battery is charging at, it registers on here at just over 2 amps. And we're at 13.7, 13.8, 13.9. 9. The voltage is going up a bit. And the amps are creeping up too. <clears throat> okay, it's definitely creeping up there. What I don't want to do is cause an explosion or something on this battery. We do have the terminals correct. We got it's it's registering positive voltage, so we're not you know we'd know it pretty soon if it wasn't correct. 
I'll check, uh, see how hot we're getting here. Not even warm, really, on the rectifier, on the heat sink. Rectifier seems fine. The voltage has crept down, dropped down a little bit as the, uh, the amps have crept up. Now this battery is kind of old. I don't know. This might be one of those that I might have to try repairing. I don't know how good this battery is. But we're getting up closer to 5 amps. We're drawing 88 watts of power, 89 watts. We're up to 1 amp on the input. Yeah, I just don't know. Hopefully this thing doesn't have a bad cell. We're at 1 amp, 92 watts. Okay, so this might be one of those cases where uh, to fully test this, we might have to take this outside to the garage. I don't want to leave this thing just charging here on my desk because, uh, well, for obvious reasons. I mean, because if there's a problem with this, I'd rather it, I'd rather it boil over or explode outside, outside than in my house all over my camera equipment. But yeah, it's looking right now like that that's not going to be an issue or even a possibility of being a problem. I think I, I've got this correct now. Uh, it's wired the way it needs to be wired. Uh, you can use a full wave bridge rectifier uh, like the part that uh, I showed earlier in a design like this. Uh, but you probably want, you know, again, you want to make sure that you don't use the full bridge um, rectifier function just use two of the diodes I mean you could get away much cheaper if you just got two dot discrete diodes most likely what I've got in this right now the cord is probably less than a dollar I ordered a bunch of cords online so th that cost me about a dollar the um, rectifier was free because I've had it so long it came in a lot of parts uh, so I didn't have to buy it but if I did have to go out and buy it they're like four dollars five dollars for that uh, rectifier part I'll put links in the description where you can get rectifiers if you want to change the rectifier in your ba old battery charger and give it a brand new life these chargers are great once again like I said because they will charge old batteries that are nearly dead um, some chargers the modern ones they have a they have a shut off uh, it's just so much computer crap in them now. It's so many, um, you know, it's, they've got fault switches and stuff like that in them where they won't even try to charge something that is below a certain level. Whereas these, you know, they're just big, dumb, stupid boxes. And if you plug in a battery, it's going to try to charge it. So, but that's what it's doing now. It's trying to charge this battery. I'm going to move this operation out into my garage and we will see, uh, a little bit later whether it did indeed charge this battery to full capacity. Okay, that's charging it's almost six amps we'll come back after a while and see where that's gotten that battery um, that battery was sitting at around uh, 11 11 volts when measured so we'll come back after a while and check that here's my other charger that is similar in design it's got you know the same uh, 6 to 12 volt switch it's rated at six amps and it looks to me like it's got the same type of selenium rectifier probably in it you can't see it right now but um, it does put out voltage and it charges a battery um, but I have noticed that some of the batteries I try to charge it with I don't know how good of a job it's doing anymore um, and it probably and I'm sure it still has the original selenium rectifier so we may do the same thing to this one uh, that we did to that one we'll go through it just completely change the rectifier uh, put some protection in there on the primary with a probably you know a two amp fuse 
just to just to ensure it doesn't exceed at least two amps it looked like it was operating around one amp so I would say if it got up to two amps you'd have serious problems be ideal to have like a one and a quarter amp maybe or a one and a half amp fuse in there on the primary just some additional protection because I'm not sure about the state of that uh, that current limiting device that's in there now when I bought this one I gave 15 bucks for it this one came out of the trash for free so yeah that'll do it for this video I hope you guys have enjoyed it if you have hit subscribe down below for now we'll see y'all later